How Scammers Made Millions by Printing Free Skins by Necrit. We've got another creative one like Narc, I see. You too can feel this zen by using the join button where I'm currently teasing future videos. Also, have you heard of this graph? Might have heard something about the graph from every single YouTuber ever, yes. Most people are subscribed? That's not good. <laughs> Since Riot Games has been active for over 12 years now, it comes to no surprise that they had a chance to forge quite a few stories of their own. Yeah. Be it the good ones, the great ones, the bad ones. Excuse me? <laughs> or the really bad ones. Wait, what's this? Oh, I don't know. I want to see that. What was that? Riot Games agrees to pay 100 million in settlement of class action gender discrimination lawsuit. 100 million. That is, uh, that is not a small number. Really bad ones. In most cases, people quickly learn about what is going on. From the minor things, some people will remember that one time people were able to buy loot boxes for one blue essence. For those of you who... What? One blue essence? That's... that's a mistake. Whew. Don't know leak. That's essentially for free. This mistake stayed up in the store for... Yeah, look at that. Look at the pricing. You could either pay 750 real dollars, or you could pay... Well, no, not 750 real dollars, but... You know what I mean? 750 riot points, which equates to about like $5 or something like that. Or one in-game blue essence, which you get like thousands of them if you just play for a couple days. That's insane. For only 10 minutes. But because nobody rarely checks the prices of loot boxes, only about 50 people globally noticed it and they bought all the skins to cap off their accounts. And because it wasn't a glitch, it was a legitimate mistake on Riot's part, Riot let those players keep all the skins. Wow. Okay, so this is huge because even if it was only 50 people or so that knew that found this out, if it was one blue essence per box, like I've had 10, 20,000 blue essence before just stacked up because it's, you know, I've already, I've already bought all the new characters with it. Uh, and so it's just, it's just adding up the more I play. So people with 10, 20,000 blue essence, they buy 20,000 loot boxes. So they're getting skins for sure out of that. That's crazy. That's a huge loss of money right there. Which made everyone who didn't buy all the skins really mad. I'm sure. Over the years, Riot gathered quite a few of these stories, but only a few months ago by a pure coincidence. I learned about something that used to be quite a big part of the League creator scene. Okay. There was a time when it was absolutely everywhere. And because it was so widespread, nobody paused to think about it. And apparently, the truth, my friends, is it is not all sunshine and rainbows because... Don't take away my sunshine and rainbows, Necrit. How dare you? Get to the fucking point. During the great Excuse height you. of the leak creator scene, many leak creators were sponsored by two companies. So the high point was in November of 2013? Eesh. You're on a steep decline there, eh, Riot buddy? The first one that started a bit of fire of its own was WT Fast. This was a company that claimed to optimize gaming networks, which I think it still does to this day. They optimize gaming networks. Increase your connection speed by up to 70%. Made by hardcore gamers for hardcore gamers. Interesting. I wonder what they do. Maybe just mess with ports or something like that? In other words, it claimed to lower your ping. After WT Fast sponsorship started appearing in nearly every League video, some people decided to look into it. And they realized... This app only really works under very specific circumstances. Yeah, see, that's what I was thinking, because, I mean, there's information publicly available to help you with, like, your ping. You can, you can go into your router and actually change, like, port settings and supposedly Im 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 improve your ping depending on your circumstances. 
Because it was simply rerouting your connection, yep. the app checked all possible paths and it picked the one with the lowest ping. However, if you simply happen to live in a bad place with realistically only one workable path, the app literally did nothing for you. Yep, that and makes so, sense. so some people started calling the creators out, saying that they promoted a scam and that the app doesn't work. The funny <laughs> thing about this is that WT Fast was essentially a VPN before VPNs became big. So Ah, that makes sense. Yep, yep, yep. Gamers private network. Very interesting. So would the same creators be sponsored by them now? It would be no different from being sponsored by NordVPN, which I Oh my goodness, and NordVPN is everywhere. NordVPN, what's the other one? Uh, shoot, now I'm not going to... What? What's the other one? NordVPN? There's another huge one that I see all the time. Ah, anyway, yeah. ...are also in every video these days. But because back then they mainly advertised low ping instead of the ability to bypass region locks, it started a bit of drama in League's community. But that wasn't the only time sponsorships got spicy. There is also the second time something like this happened. But that one is a lot more interesting because... Tell me more, I, I'm waiting on bated breath. Because to this day, most people still don't know what was really happening, including the creators themselves. Interesting. And very quickly, before I dive into this, I'll show some screenshots and footage on screen, but I am not calling anyone out. Nobody knew what was happening. He's covering himself a little CYA. Smart, smart Necrit. So we are not talking about people promoting a scam. To be honest, back then I would have taken the sponsor too. And at the end of the day, as you'll see, it's just funny that any of this happened in the first place. Just move on already. As I said, <laughs> I learned about this by a coincidence. My okay. source of information wanted to stay anonymous, so I will honor that request and I will hide their identity. Okay. So when I learned what was happening, it went something like this. Hey, remember that time you could buy some of the unavailable skins from the resellers? Yeah, they're yoing the curse from Riot that made the orchestrators a lot of money. Interesting. Tell me more. Those of you who are nearing your 30s may remember that back in the day, a lot of people were sponsored by shops that were selling skins. Originally, in this video, I wanted to mention some of the shops specifically. But I don't know what they would do, so I am not naming anyone. By pure technicality, I can't prove they did anything. But you can guess who I'm talking about. Anyway, these websites were simple resellers of skins, who mainly focused on selling skins that were not available in League anymore. And ah, interesting. Okay, so you go to these resellers and you can find uh, legacy skins or whatever. They tried to sponsor absolutely every creator. And I really mean every creator. Besides me. You see, seven years ago, when everyone was riding the League gameplay hype train, I was the awkward guy in the side lane talking about lore. Some oh no. <laughs> you were busted focusing on the lore of the game. Interesting. People knew I existed, but I definitely wasn't what you would call mainstream. So even though I really wanted to be sponsored and I really wanted that PAX Jack skin, I was never considered for a sponsorship. Oh, speaking of which, let's talk about how they could afford all the sponsorships. You see, because this was a skin reseller dealing with skin codes, what they could do is offer creators skins instead of money. And you- Oh, that's smart. Okay, okay. Interesting. You bet that's all they needed to get hooked up. Because this was happening during League's great height, a lot of people would do anything for those juicy pack skins. What? You don't think that would happen today? You don't think kids would rob a bank for a few Roblox bucks? Oh, they definitely would. Also, I like how he said that. Roblox bucks? It's, uh, it's Robux, okay? You're right, but they considered it. So yes, in a lot of cases... Did I just see that right? Hold on a second. Let me just... Let me just... Is it a crime 
to do illegal things on Roblox. Okay. That's a very strange question. <laughs> I I don't like how that sounds. It seems like there's an obvious answer, but I'm, I'm not... It's, what? Considered it. So yes, in a lot of cases, people were paid in skins instead of real money. To be honest, that's not the worst thing to get paid in. So yeah, I feel like I feel like a lot of people would go for that too. You want to have that skin to show off in your group and you're streaming or making YouTube videos and yeah, you just want to be like, okay, I want to look legit. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll promote your thing if you give me an awesome skin I can't get by myself. So let's talk about where those skins came from. While these days the craze is all about rioters giving away gun buddies and riot wards. Back in the day, gun all buddy. the special goodies were given away in the form of codes printed on physical cards. Okay, and that's a little bit harder to get. You would have to have like stacks of those stored away somewhere. These were usually given away during special gaming events, namely PAX and Gamescom. Gamescom used to be very special to Riot. Not only was that where the very first League Championship ever happened, okay. but that's also where Riot used to tease some of their champions. For example, Syndra and oh. Rengar. So, that's also where Riot gave away exclusive skins. Okay, so they were handing out big stacks of those codes. So, did, what, somebody just nabbed a, bu a bunch of stacks or something? Which means skins you couldn't get anywhere else. Ah. The first year, if you attended one of these events, you could get PAX Twisted Fate. The year after that, you could get PAX Jax. And the year after that, you could get PAX Siver. The f Very cool. I'm sure a lot of people would be after those skins. Following years, Riot recognized that people weren't massive fans of this kind of exclusivity. So after that, people got codes for Riot Blitzcrank and Arcade, Sona and Hecarim. All of which were skins that were also available in the normal store. Okay. Now, because the old pack skins were exclusive and because we assume they were printed in limited quantity, right. of course, these skins were in high demand. And people were ready to buy them off of those who attended the events. Which ah, okay, so here we go. Here's the money maker. You sell the skin codes for like 50, 100 bucks or something. Which means that in one way or another, all the cards that were not given away during these events ended up in the hands of the resellers. Okay. At least, that's what we thought was happening. You see, getting the cards through a shady practice and selling them on the internet? That would be fine, it's like selling anything old on eBay, but ev Right, yeah, yeah, you just sell something that you have. I mean, yeah, no big deal, that happens all the time. Eventually, you would run out of physical cards to sell, so you would hit a ceiling. Right. That's why, for the longest time, Riot didn't do anything about it. There was a clear limit, but somehow, these websites just kept on running. And as- what are they doing? How are they continuing to sell codes? As it turns out, they could keep on running for as long as they wanted. Because they figured out how to generate the codes themselves. Yeah, we don't really have the details. They... So they hacked the system. So they were actually able to make their own codes. That's crazy. That's, that is something. Okay. Anymore, but apparently it wasn't that hard. Essentially, the codes operated on a formula. For example, let's say the third letter always had to be a C. So they literally just hacked. They just, they just compiled a bunch of code data and they're just like, okay, we see a pattern. And then, okay, this is what the next one's going to be in the next one. And they just printed codes, literally. The fifth letter always had to be an H, and the last one would always have to be number six. That's crazy. Okay, this is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. That's insane. Anything in between didn't... Riot's like, whoopsie. ...matter. As long as you had these three symbols in the code, the system would recognize this as a silver skin. Wow. Now, of course, there was a limitation. Each combination of letters could only be added into the system once. The thing is, because these were 12 digit long codes, they could virtually print out an infinite amount. 
the possible supply would be massively bigger than the demand. Wow. This also makes it funny when the websites mentioned that something was not in stock. But in 12 hours, they will totally get you a new physical card. Knowing this is how the resellers operated, it now absolutely makes sense how they could afford all the sponsorships. Yeah, they're just, they're literally just printing skins. And look at how much they cost. 80 euros? 80 euros for a single skin. And imagine, people are like, oh, this is the skin that I wanted from that thing that I couldn't go to. Let's say there was 100,000 people that didn't get to go. Even 10,000 people that didn't get to go. That's 800,000 euros. That's insane. Because some people got paid in skins, which they could generate for free, they got all the promotions for free. Was it all illegal? Wow. I don't know. Would I get chased down if someone figured out that I bought one of these skins? Probably not. At least I hope so. <laughs> it says here you were caught in possession of illegally attained JPEGs. Is this about the NFTs I keep hearing about? No, sir. It was Pegs Jack skins. <laughs> no, we're not talking about NFTs. Get out of here. Hmm. Death. The crazy thing is that the creators never learned about any of this. In the eyes of the creators and the customers, it was all legitimate codes from the events. That's that's also kind of hilarious, yeah. You're just a creator doing your thing, trying to make some money, trying to trying to grow your platform and oh, you're going to give me skins to promote your thing. So basically like this is awesome. Yeah, I want this cool skin and sure, I'll promote your stuff. So the these guys selling the skins, they don't they don't have to use any actual funds. They're just giving away codes that anyone could technically create. Crazy racket here. That's insane. But also, if you actually look into what was happening, it wasn't a scam. Generating new codes was no different from a kid who goes to Steam and types in a random number to see if they can unlock a random game. Let's be honest, we have all tried that in our lives. And sure, even if you get lucky, I don't think anyone would call it a scam. Also, Riot never planned on distributing these skins further. They never planned to sell the skins themselves. Yeah. So the resellers didn't even bite into Riot's profits. So what they have really done is given the skins to more people than what was intended. So because the customers legitimately got their skins, and because the creators got free skins to enjoy too, nobody got harmed. That's and crazy. And the only one who might have gotten harmed was Riot. Yeah, Riot, you're technically losing money. Yeah. Or I guess you could say, I don't know, it's kind of like, it feels dirty. It feels weird because you're like, you're making money off of Riot's free thing. That is if Riot ever decided to sell the skins themselves, which yeah. they didn't. Also, if the internet taught me anything, it is that if a corporation gets harmed, nobody cares, it's fine. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> We're hurting the big bad company that makes billions? Eh, we don't care. But even if we can't call it a scam, I think we can all agree that it was unethical to sell the skins. Exactly. But you see, we didn't even get to the funny part. There wasn't just one website that did this. Apparently, there were multiple people who figured out how the codes work. Ooh. And they all started their own skin shops. Of Dang. course, all the shops knew about each other, which is why they all tried to have similar prices. There was no point in undercutting each other because that would only burn everything down. However, because That's there crazy. were multiple shops generating these codes. There's so many. <laughs> There's just multiple, multiple people doing this. <laughs> Free codes being sold at a premium everywhere. Occasionally, one shop would generate a code that was used by someone else. At that point, if the customer told you that their code didn't work, you had no way to check if they were bluffing. And you automatically had to concede into giving them another code, which you did for free. Now, because all the shops knew about each other and they knew what they were doing wasn't exactly ethical, to a certain degree, they worked together to keep it low and to okay. stay away from Riot's prying eyes. So they're all in cahoots. All these guys know they're, they're talking, they're sharing information. Like, okay, let's keep the prices around this range. Uh, I used up this range of codes today, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's insane. But the profits were too big. 
the temptation too great. I mean, we are not talking about 10 or 20 dollar skins. These special skins went for a hundred, four hundred, or even a thousand dollars. Oh Which, by goodness. the way, all the prices were made up because there was no supply. So yeah, the resellers absolutely wanted to maximize their profits. That's insane. Now, up to this point, as far as I know, all the shops agreed to not do any sponsors and to not buy any ads. That okay. would expose them to riot. Right, yeah, you don't want to be promoting that you have this massive supply when it should be limited. In, in riot's minds, it was limited, like, oh... You know, we remember or we have an account or whatever that we printed, you know, let's say 10,000 uh, code cards, right? So these huge events, maybe 10, 15,000 people show up. They have 10,000 code cards. So they sh they're thinking to themselves, okay, we gave out 7,800, whatever. There's a there should only be 2,200 left. And it just keeps going and going. And it's being advertised and it just keeps going and going. Like, yeah. It would get found out. But that twisted fate was 400 euros. Ugh. So one of them had an idea. Since we are aiming at League of Legends players who spend most of their time watching League of Legends videos on YouTube, what if I tell them to promote my shop in their videos? <laughs> and that's exactly what they did. And the first skin giveaways started rolling out. That was the point of no return. There you and go. And the moment one shop went rogue... Yep, as soon as they start doing it, everybody's doing it. Let's go sponsor people. Let's give them Pax Jack skins and get them to promote our site. Everyone else did as well. And everyone quickly started sponsoring everyone and they started advertising everywhere. <laughs> it was all gas, no brakes, because it was only a matter of time before Riot figured out what was really happening. And indeed, it yep. wasn't long before Riot realized, huh, there is no way they have that many physical cards. Right. And that's how Riot ultimately found out what was happening. In the end, it was greed that shut down the exclusive skin black market. That's insane, man. That is actually crazy that... Man, people will figure out anything to try and get an edge and, and make some money. That's, that's crazy. That was really interesting, really entertaining. I enjoyed that video a lot.